Hi, I'm Aaron Cook. I'm 55 years old. Today's date is September 27, 2015, and I'm in Sacramento, California with my two daughters, Emily and Elizabeth Cook. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Cook. I am 11 years old, and today's date is September 27, 2015. I am in Sacramento, California, and I am here with my dad and my sister, Emily. Hi, my name is Emily Cook. I'm 11 years old. Today's date is September 27, 2015. I live in Sacramento, California, and I'm here with my dad and my sister, Elizabeth. Well, girls, thanks a lot for coming down today with me. I know that you weren't quite sure what this was going to be about, but I was kind of excited the fact that we would have a conversation that would be recorded forever and that you might be able to look back on it someday and listen to it, just kind of be amazed that you were part of this sort of recording process and that other people ha could look at it someday and you could you could even go to Washington DC them someday with your own kids and you'd say let's go to the Library of Congress and listen to that conversation that I had with grandpa so many years ago with your grandpa so um, what are you guys thinking about this I forgot what I was just about to ask you <laughs> So, well, I'll go back to when I first met you guys. Well, it was about 11 years and about eight months because you came early. And I was at the doctor's office, and they were doing an ultrasound, and they saw this heartbeat. And they put a little heart sticker on the screen, and then they put, then she went, Oh, wait a minute. And then she saw a second heartbeat, and she put a second little heart on the screen, and she says, you're going to have twins. And I was so happy to hear that, because we'd wanted to have kids for so long. And, you know, we tried a long time to have kids, and wasn't quite sure that was going to happen. So, And uh, then about six weeks later, we did another ultrasound. They said, well, let's see what these are, boys or girls? And, I have my fingers crossed, and they look. They said, oh, it's, it's one's a girl, okay, baby A, they'd call you. And then they said, well, let's look at baby B, and they kind of moved the ultrasound around and found baby B, and they said, oh, baby B is a girl. And I was like, oh, my God, I have, not only would I have two kids and twins, but I have two girl twins. Yes, Elizabeth. Um, how do you tell if it's a girl or a boy? Well, I guess a little boy might have something dangling off of him, and a little girl does not have anything dangling off of her. And they can tell pretty early, and I was pretty impressed that they could tell that <laughs> with an ultrasound machine. So. so then we just had to wait for another, you know, six months to actually meet you. And in that process, as you well know, somebody got a little too overactive, and you guys came early. And that was terrifying because as a doctor, I knew what being premature because we'd already had Chad and Claire come along and they were premature, your cousins. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's pretty scary. And the doctor sat down and said, this is pretty serious stuff. And I said, hey, we're going to make it through it. That's going to be okay. I was totally optimistic about it. He kept strong said, oh, but the good news is they're girls and they're twins. Those are our best survivors. And I thought, these kids are strong. They're my kids. I knew they were going to be strong. And sure enough, you guys only weighed two and a half pounds, and you were about <laughs> slightly over a foot long, and you looked like little aliens at the time. But I just fell in love with you the minute I saw you. And... Uh, we waited, and we just they had tests and tests and checked you, and then you guys got sick and with a blood infection, and you got through that, and I thought, okay, fine. They're just going to grow now. Go ahead, Emily. Didn't I get really, really sick? Well, that's the next step. So we recovered <laughs> from the one staph infection, and I thought, oh, they've, they've gotten through this. And then, Emily, you got a fungal infection, and that is like, 
fungus that grows on cheese and mold and stuff like that, and that got in your bloodstream, and that's really serious. And they said, you look so weak and gray and limp, and I just thought, oh, my goodness. And they called, Mom called me up and said, they're not sure Emily's going to make it. I said, they're going to make it. So I caught on the phone with the doctor, and they said, well, we got to do this, 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 and this, and they did it, and you were better in two or three days. But it was a lot for you to go through at that point. So go ahead, Elizabeth. Was she eating cheese? She <laughs> wasn't even eating yet because when you're that small, your stomach doesn't even work and you can't even eat milk. Go ahead. Wait, wait. Then how does she get a fungal infection? Usually the nurses don't wash their hands well enough most of the time because oh. the only things that can get into your body or through your bloodstream like that are actually through the fluids that they give you to live on or the needles they stick in your heels and your mm. arms. So a lot of times those are things that are actually called caused by medical professionals. And that was pretty disappointing too since I'm in that field. Go ahead, Emily. I, now I have a really good immune system. I, you must have all those antibiotics when you were that age and all that fighting of that infection must have given you that super immune system because you never get sick now. I do. Well, the next battle was Elizabeth's heart valve didn't close. Oh, that's hard. And they said, well, we might have to do heart surgery on her. And I thought, how can you do heart surgery on a kid who weighs three pounds? And they gave you some medicine, and we just kind of crossed our fingers, and we hoped and prayed. We said, oh, my God, this has just got to work. And guess what? It worked. The hole in your heart closed because there's a hole between when you're an infant and you're inside the uterus that goes between both sides of your heart without going into the lungs because your lungs don't work because you're not breathing yet. And your heart state, your, your uh, what's called a patent ductus arteriosus, and it closed. That's the one your cousin actually had to have surgery for, and that's why she's got that big scar in her chest. Go ahead, Emily. Um, I don't remember you saying anything about that. Oh, well, see? You see the kind of things you hear when you get in a recording booth with your dad and we talk about <laughs> stuff like this? Pretty neat, huh? So, okay, now we're at four weeks out, and you actually get to come back to Sacramento because you've been in Berkeley this whole time. We've been diving back and forth because that's where you were when the waters broke, and that's where you both got born. And uh, so we said, well, when can we go back home? And they said, okay, they are, they're big enough and strong enough they can go home now. They sent an ambulance, two nurses, and a doctor just to take two little three-pound babies home. <laughs> wow. And we followed behind them in a car, and then they got you settled up in Sacramento. And guess who you met in Sacramento in the NICU? We met her. We saw her today. Dr. Akins. Dr. Akins. So Dr. Akins took over your care, and she's still your pediatrician today. Yeah. She works in the neonatal intensive care. And she talked to us all the time, and she was kind of our person that we would see a lot of the times. And when you guys, three weeks later, when you were seven weeks old, and we had five, a whole five pounds, they said, you can go home now. And we said to Dr. Akins, we're going to need a pediatrician because these kids are so small and sick, and we're going to need a lot of care. And she says, well, I just happen to be a pediatrician as well as working in the intensive care unit. You could be my patients. And we said, we love that. And you've known Dr. Akins your entire life since you were just four weeks old. Go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I guess we knew her, but we didn't exactly know her. No. She knew us, but we didn't exactly know her. What's your first memory of your life, Elizabeth? How far can you remember back? First thing you remember. Probably, um, oh, when um, Mama was sitting at the end of the vet, at the, so we were in your guys' room, and so Mama was sitting at the end, no, that was, no, that was like, Okay, never mind. Um, 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 um. You can think. Emily, go ahead. Oh. I remember back to when I think I was really little. I was lying on this hairy chest. It was very warm. I remember warm stuff on me. It was warm air on me and and I can't remember anything anymore. Well, I can only think of one hairy chest that you'd be laying on. It's probably mine. Maybe. 
baby. Because that was how <laughs> they made you grow stronger. Because they found out that if babies lay on their parents' chests or people's chests, and they make contact with the skin to the skin instead of skin to a blanket or something. So right. you'd lay on our chests, and we'd wrap you up and keep you warm, and then you would you would eat fat more and you'd grow faster. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Um. So yeah, probably was um my um my wait my my earliest memory was probably probably um. I forget now. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. So um, so um, so that, so I be, like I rem- I like like so I saw a picture of this and then I remember what it felt like. Um, so yeah, so that's what a lot of my memories do. I like forget that like that I have that memory and then I see a picture of it and then I remember it all. So anyway, so probably my earliest memory was um probably was at preschool, um uh. Or not at preschool. Sorry, uh, at um at uh birth at Mil- at Miller's or Ryder's birthday party, um, and so they had cake and um th- and one and um like and um one the and like I think Miller was sitting in like a high chair with a cake right in front of him. It was like it was a biggish cake and so and um emily she uh stuck her finger in it and she looked at frosting and i was like no 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 don't do that don't do that that's his cake we have to wait and so yeah so um yeah that's probably my ooh, one of them go ahead emily i have a longer memory i was in pre-k my first pre-k um it was about a week after I'd started. Um, well, I'm just that's a random guess, but I know I was in pre-K, and there was this pre-K. long, dark hallway on the playground outside, and there was like an end of a gate, and it led to the other yard. We weren't supposed to go in it. I saw this other like kid going in it, and I just watched them walk down the hall halfway, and then they like bolted back. I remember they had a lot of fun bouncy balls. The balls that you bounce on, those ha- I played on those every day, and it was like a little town that I could fit in. I remember they had those delicious crackers. Oh yeah, yeah. like the Scooby Doo ones. Uh huh. Yeah, that was at uh, Smallville. Like, Animal crackers and stuff. No, they were like Scooby oh. Scooby snacks. You know, oh, yeah. remember th- they were like shaped them. like um, Scooby snacks from like Scooby Doo and all those movies. That was so good. They were like really, really, really good graham crackers. I loved them. I still do. And they were kind. Of, they weren't exactly chewy, but they weren't super duper crunchy. I've been looking for they them my like whole soft. life, and you know where I found it? What? Where? Massachusetts. Ah. <laughs> All that you found in Massachusetts. I think they're at Rayleigh's. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, one of my earliest memories is feeding you guys in the middle of the night. Oh, wow. And basically, you had to be fed every three hours, and you had your diaper changed every three hours. And I remember Mom and I would take turns every three hours. We'd warm up milk, and we'd get some formula mixed up, and we had the bottles all ready, and you'd heat them up. And then I, you couldn't do two of you at once. You had to, you had to, because you couldn't hold two babies and feed them. So what you had to do was put one even a bassinet, and I put my foot on the edge, and I'd rock it, and I'd hold one bottle in that hand, and then I'd hold the other one like this with the bottle in that hand. And so I'd rock the bassinet, and I'd hold the other baby, and that's how I got you guys fed. And the faster we could get you fed and change, the quicker we could go back to sleep, and then. Get ready for the next day, because <laughs> you imagine every three hours it's pretty tiring after a couple months. Um, and I was still working eighty hours a week, so that was pretty interesting. Um, did you ever like? Were you were you like always tired? Like you and Mom were always tired, like in the middle of the night. Like how many hours of sleep did you get? Well, you know, I don't sleep much anyway, but so I would say hours. that probably if I got you guys fed and then I went back to bed I could sleep five or six hours every night I know it's hard for mom cause she I needed, sleep eight hours every night she needed to sleep a lot more than I did that's why we split the shifts up so that I could help out and then I was used to not sleeping so um what was your been what's um 
the f- what's r- been your favorite birthday so far that you guys have had? Elizabeth, go ahead. Probably about, like, not this year, but last year. Um, that was probably my favorite birthday with the, um, well, yeah, it was, it was, I had, like, instead of, like, uh, bobbing for apples, they were bobbing for peaches and nectarines. They were really, really yummy, and they were super sweet. And we had, and we, had, uh, and we had a zip line in the backyard. It's like a hundred feet long, right? Seventy-five feet long. Anyways, yeah, and we also, and we had a hot tub and a trampoline, and uh, one and a ha- and a hammock. Um, and then this other swinging chair, and um, yeah, and it and like it was really really fun it was and we had a pinata and it was just like kind of like an old-fashioned birthday like just at the house just like playing and hanging out and, we, and um uh so yeah and then like and um we had a water balloon fight and uh, my friend she didn't exactly look when she went down the zip line so she hit me right in the back and i did a face plant so i was like that that was like the only thing that was bad about that birthday but it didn't it didn't really hurt much it more stunned me but yeah it kind of hurt um, but yeah, that was really, really, really fun. How about you, Emily? Um, I liked last year too. I liked Elizabeth's party, but I also liked mine because I had a family party mm-hmm. to Six Flags. Oh. And I we rode that wooden one, the Roar, about sixteen times. Until my over head bobbed. I wasn't. I, I didn't have that. It didn't bother I, you. I a would bit. go around. It was so freaky. The first hill was like so high. It was like unbelievably high. And you just flew through that. And it actually didn't have any gears, only momentum took mm-hmm. it, which was really awesome. It's a cool fact about that. So. Ooh, Daddy, go what's ahead. your favorite birthday party? My favorite birthday ever, I think, was we were up in uh, Lake Tahoe. You guys were just small, and everybody came up there, and we stayed at the big cabin on the west shore, and I think it was probably my, gosh, 46 or something like that, and everybody came up from my family and mom's family, and we had a big cake, and we all slept over there, and everybody drove up, and it was a huge cabin, and uh, just got to go, oh, my favorite thing on my birthday is to go bike riding around Lake Tahoe, so I think I got to do that at the same time. So that was it. I think that had to be it. The, the times I get to ride around Lake Tahoe on my birthday are probably my favorite. I, remem- I remember that. Like, you went, like, and you, like, went around the, um, the, 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 the lake and Lake Tahoe. And it was really fun because didn't you take a bunch of pictures? And, like, I saw mm-hmm. a bunch of them. They were really pretty because, like, Tahoe's really pretty, pretty. So, of course, it's going to be pretty. But, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I remember, remember that Jim one. Slim. I went and picked Jim Slim up in the airport. Yeah, I remember And then you guys were that. standing out in front, and we drove up, and you said goodbye to us. Both of you were just standing in front of the house, little little young kids. And you said goodbye to us. Goodbye. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bye. No, I remember that. Bye, so bye. That's so that's probably my favorite. Um, what do you guys remember about Grandma Joanne when she before she <gasps> got Alzheimer's? What was your favorite memory of her? Um, probably so we were in the guest bed, and she um and she um um and she and she was sitting in between us, um, um, and so she was sitting in between us. Emily was on like I think um the right side and I was on the left side of her and she was reading us this um a uh, flamingo book oh no wait this was on the leather on the black leather couch not the guest room bedroom and so she was reading us this pink flamingo book and so and so there's this fl- flamingo and so she was looking for friends and like everyone was just like because like she was in the forest in the um the jungle and she was um and she was uh and she was and so since she was bright pink and no one really wanted her around because they wanted to hunt and she's like and like and so like so she was always like kicked out of like because um it was kind of like the ugly duckling but just with a flamingo instead of a duckling except for yeah basically oh uh, i can't remember much when she before she got alzheimer's because i was really young when 
before she got Alzheimer's. She got Alzheimer's kind of like when I. Oh, don't you remember when we went to Hawaii together? Oh yeah, she, yes. I remember that we were walking down this dirt road, and I was short. I was like up to your like butt. And I. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, let it. And then me. I'm oh. not done yet. Okay, sorry. Thank you. And um. Ah, uh, and I was walking behind Grandma, with Mom. I think, yeah. Okay. And then from that trip, I also I I um remember that so we had stayed with her for a night and um yeah so she was so I I remember this one night when she was getting dressed which was really interesting and then um and then also um she had this butterscotch candies that were so good. And so, like, we just snuck them, and um, we hid in the corner, and we started eating one. Like, we each ate one. Oh, and yeah. she's just like, girls, come out. I'm not, I won't get mad at you. I promise. And so it came out, and she was just like, oh, you're eating my butterscotch candies. Those are so good, right? And I was like, oh, my God, yes, they're so good. So, yeah. So, um, and then I also remember on that, on that trip that, um, that we went swimming, and like, um, and it was super, there. Were, there were a bunch of really warm pools, and it was really fun. And yeah, it was really cool. Neat. You guys have it. Go ahead, Emily. Um, how many injuries have you had? Well, I've had. Mom and I got hit by a car in 1997. That was going 45 miles an hour, and we were both going about 35 feet, and that was on Mom's birthday on July 5th, and that was probably the worst injury I've ever had. I think I broke my teeth out when I was 10. That was a bad injury, um, and then I was at a stop sign, and a car made a left-hand turn into the wrong lane and hit me, and then I hurt my wrist at work. I think that's about it. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> That's enough for one lifetime. I'm ready to stop. That's enough for All like 10 my, people's lifetime. My injuries are I've broken my toe. Wait, why are we talking about your injuries? Because she can. She wants to. And I've also broken my pinky before. And I've sprained my ankle once. And I've got a lot of bad scratches and bruises. That sounds like enough for me, too. Um, which, do either of you remember Grandpa Boyd? Yeah. Tell me what you remember about Grandpa no Boyd. No idea. Um, I think I came, did he ever come over to my house? He yeah, came to our like, house on I the way up that. to Mendocino. <coughs> yeah, and so I remember that, and then, <coughs> and then, um, I, so I remember that, and then, I also remember, like, he was there, and he was, like, in the um, hallway, and um, he had a cane, I think, something like that. So, yeah, he was super nice. And there's, oh, and, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so he <coughs> passed away just after your girls turned one years old in uh, September of 2005. And Emily and I had just gotten back from a trip. We flew back there because Elizabeth, you got sick. So Emily and I went, flew back to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it's the greatest picture of Emily sitting on his lap and him smiling because, you know, Grandpa Boyd loved kids because he was a pediatrician. Plus, he just loved kids. And that maybe that's why he became a pediatrician. He actually became a pediatrician because my aunt died when she was only four of leukemia. And he thought that he'd become a pediatrician and maybe save some kids from dying of leukemia someday. But he sure loved you girls. When he held you, he would just have the mm -hmm. most amazing look in his eye. So it's a shame that he wasn't around for you guys to get to know better. I don't remember him at all. Yeah. Well, you were only one years old, so. Um, you have any questions for me about me yeah, when I yeah. was young or old? Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Elizabeth. Um, 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 
Oh, yeah. Um, what was it like growing up in a neighborhood with a bunch of kids on your block um, in Berkeley? Well, where I grew up in Berkeley is where Grandma still lives. and Not exactly. Yeah, but where her house still is. And um, I really enjoyed it. It took me a little while to get used to Berkeley after we moved and my parents got divorced. But there was always kids playing, and it was all the same kids I went to school with. So we walked to school. We walked home from school. We got our homework yeah. done, and then we just played in the street till someone called us in to eat something. And then we'd go back out after dinner and play some more if we didn't have homework and tell someone called us in to go to sleep. So we played football during the day and ride our bikes and we played hide and seek and tag at night in the dark. Um, things were a lot different then. I mean, kids just spent a lot more time outside. And I know you guys have always wished that you had uh, friends in the neighborhood you could just go outside to. And you do now. I mean, now. You got Ava and you got Cassie down the street. So you actually are old enough now to go walk on your own and go to the park and meet them and so the things things are looking better for you. I mean, it took a while. It took 11 years to get a neighbor, but not bad. <laughs> 11 years. But you have really great friends, don't you? We went to six apart. Okay. Go ahead, Emily. Um, I have a question to ask you. Sure. Did your mom ever hit you? Yeah. My mom uh, was a single mom. She had three kids. She went back to school, got her master's, raised us, had took care of us, you know, most of the time because my dad either was out of the country or else he just had to could see us every other weekend. So pretty much my mom took care of us. And there was a lot of stress on her. And when she, she was still pretty young, you got to realize when I moved to Berkeley, my mom was only 32 years old. When I had you guys, I was 44 already. So I was a pretty mature guy. And I think it's a lot of stress in trying to raise, you know, three kids by yourself. And I'm sure that just coming from the tradition, my mom was raised in, in a Catholic school. And even Catholic, the people that taught at the Catholic schools even spanked kids. So I don't think it seemed that foreign that when kids acted up that their parents would spank them. So my mom did uh, give us whippings when we misbehaved. So... I don't think it did any good. It just made her feel bad and made us try to get out of it. So I decided and talk, talked to mom because she didn't believe in it, that we would never, ever strike you guys or spank you and we'd just talk to you. And how's that work so far? It worked pretty good. good. Do you I think it would help to beat kids? No. No. No, I don't think so either. I know what would help. What would help? Unlimited TV. That helps kids behave better? Oh. Wow, that, that really goes against all the research I've ever read. Um, what I've read is that, or what you've told me is that, well, you stand there hypnotized. And if you're hypnotized, how can you do something bad? Oh, 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 yeah, but then you, when you're not watching it, I guess you don't behave as well because you see all these crazy things on TV. Do you think TV is good for you or bad for you? Really? Okay. What do it's, you think, Elizabeth? It's bad, but it's really funny. <laughs> okay. Because it, like, rocks your brain. <laughs> well, not exactly. So, um, let me think of some other great memories that I've had. I'm always sad that you guys didn't get to meet your uh, great-grandma, Betty. That's who you're named after, Elizabeth. Because she was just the most gentle, kind person and she lived in Sacramento all that time and barely got to meet Chad and Claire, but certainly didn't ever get to meet you. You guys came along the, the last of the group. Um, even James beat you guys out. What do you think about having a cousin? Is that just, that's the same age as you. Is that a good thing? Um, he's... He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is sometimes scared easier than, yeah, he's a coward. That he doesn't have a... He doesn't have a s any a siblings. siblings to help encourage him. And I try to encourage him, but then 
It doesn't work, uh -uh. Emily. At it all. doesn't work. Well, you're pretty overwhelming sometimes, you know, with your with swords sword. and your fencing and chasing him around and trying to Sh wrestle him. Yeah. Poor thing was. Emily? Oh, and blowing the trombone right in his face on your loudest note? He told me to. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Well, one time he didn't. What's your guys' favorite thing about school? Speaking of trombone. I like instruments and the Chromebooks that we unfortunately lost privileges to. But we can earn them back. Good, good. Your, your class can't. Our class can. No, our class can, oh. too. Elizabeth? Cool. What? Don't go back there. So what's your favorite thing about school? Uh, probably um, orchestra. What? Probably orchestra and math and science. Great. That's and the Chromebooks. So what, what's the most? And art. Ah, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, so Emily, what do you think you're going to be when you grow up? Um, um. <laughs> Maybe you can think about it. Elizabeth can tell us. What do you uh. think you're going to be? Oh, oh, I'm going to be... Wait. I thought he said for me. Okay, you oh. can go. I'm if just going to I'm going to talk. Okay. Go. Kay. Um I want to be a Well, should I say want or you what can, do I think? You can be want or think. Do both. Um I think um to be truly honest, I think I'm not going to get a job and I'll become a homeless person. Okay. Um so what, do you what want I to be? want to be <laughs> is uh, um, a, wow. a famous cheerleader who travels world and gets money. Okay. Well, I can guarantee you'll be a college-educated homeless person then because you're at least going to get a college degree out of this. Yeah, you are not going <laughs> to become homeless. A college degree homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Liz, how about you? What do you think you're going to be and what do you want to be? Well... No, I did not want to be a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, anyway, so um, I want to be a veterinarian. Or, no. Well, I have a lot of wants. <laughs> uh, I want to be a veterinarian or a famous pop singer. Um, and what I'll probably end up doing is... I don't know. Something with animals. Maybe a breeder. I like breeders. Oh, Daddy. Uh -huh. When are we going to see Auntie Allison? Uh, as soon as she gets back from St. Louis, uh. from her latest uh, dog show. Um, it's funny, because I first started off wanting to be a pet store owner. But then I realized there weren't any more dinosaurs to sell. So I decided <laughs> that was not going to be a good choice because I only want to sell dinosaurs and big corrals. And wow. then, you know, I started racing motorcycles, and that's when I got hurt. And I, met, and I met that orthopedic surgeon. That's really... So, you know, you never know. You may be 16, 18 years old. You meet, may meet somebody that just has a huge impact on your life that you just go, wow, I want to be like that person. And then the next thing you know, you'll study for the next 15 years, and you'll become that person. Another 15 years in well, school? Well, remember, I was 30 years old before I got my first real job. I had a lot of jobs, but not my final job. Oh. oh so I was 30 years old when I got my <laughs> final <laughs> job. <laughs> Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> Daddy. Yeah. Um, when did... When... What, 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 I forget. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, what's your first doctor story that you have, that you remember? Well, the first one I ever got operated on, I remember, was the breast infection. It smelled so bad, I almost threw up. Oh. Tell the, about it. In the residence. What's the Tell was about so it. so funny. Tell about it. Well, they said I could do this case, and so I cut into this lady, and the pus rolled out, and it was smelled so bad that I gagged so bad, and they thought that was just hysterical, because they knew uh. what was going to happen, because they'd done it before. And they thought they'd get this medical student to do it. And get a laugh out of it, so they did at my expense. 
but I still got to operate. So wow. and since there was infection in one, we had to open up the other one too, and it drained a bunch of pus, and it smelled just as bad. Didn't they gag too? Well, they stood back. And they actually put wintergreen on their mask beforehand because they knew about it. Oh, wintergreen? They put wintergreen uh, <laughs> oil on your mask, and then you smell the wintergreen instead of the pus. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait, what, did you but not didn't do that? I, didn't they didn't give me the wintergreen, no. <laughs> didn't other people, like, gag? Everybody okay. still thought it was bad. Um, so, guys, what's, what's your biggest fear these days? Any fears? Go ahead, Emily. <laughs> I hate being alone. Uh-huh. And my greatest fear is that me and Lizzie fight too much and then we'll our relationship will come apart and then we won't ask for each other for help because we can't get along and our relationship will be broken forever. Wow. How about you, Lee? Probably So I, I would probably being alone, and uh, getting thrown into the Hunger Games. Okay. But the books are so good. I so just don't want to be that person. You just don't want to be in that <laughs> book. Okay. No, I don't want to be Katniss. Yeah, I think my biggest fear is that something would ever happen to me where I couldn't live long enough to enjoy the two of you. That'd be very that. sad. Yeah, because I want to see you two get married and have kids. and. Well, you're only 54. I don't think you're going to die at age 60 or something. I don't think so either. I think I'm going to live <laughs> to be at least 95. At least 100. Okay, we'll shoot for 100. Grandpa's grandpa's doing good. <laughs> yeah, mom's side, she'll well, she'll probably, probably be 120 by the time she dies. Uh, grandpa's 90 what now? He's 90 something now. He's 95. Yeah. Doesn't he still walk a lot? He still walks. Like a mile every morning. So I'm, I'm going to use him as my I'm going to use him as my role model. Go ahead. It says uh, five more years. I don't know. What's your favorite thing? What's your favorite memory of me? Oh, there's too many. <laughs> no, oh. Go ahead, Emily. Hey. My favorite. Go ahead. Yeah, what do you think? My favorite memory is when we're at um uh, when we're at Six Flags and we're going down the roller. Oh, I mean, I go ahead, Liz. What's your, so what's your favorite probably memory, when um you would just come home and you were and you were like <laughs> on one knee, um, like when you take a knee in soccer or something. So like when you're on one knee, and um you uh and you um and your arms were open, and Emily and I both rushed into your arms, and the mommy took a picture of it. And it was really fun. You had a big thingy of bread. Yeah, when you guys oh, are yeah. when you guys are running in my arms and jump, I think my favorite memory is you fall asleep on my chest, and I would be after being on call, and I'd be exhausted, and both of you would fall asleep with me, and the other one is coming in the door and hearing "Daddy, Daddy." Is that you run down the hall as fast as you can, and remember you would go to one end of the hall, and run as fast as you can, and jump as high as you could, and I'd catch you. Oh, I remember that. Also, I love doing that. Oh, and I also really liked it when Emily and I, we both fit in one of the little cooler bags oh, for like, yeah. shopping. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. And you would swing us around in that in thingy. In circles, yeah. Yeah, and it was super fun. And then, like, when I got out, I was super just, you know, just like, wee. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That was like a human roller coaster. Where you have Made to out be of a cooler bag. Yes, and a man and a little girl. One of my Two. favorite memories is oh looking out the back window of the RV in Nevada and watching oh, yeah. you guys just get up in the morning in your PJs and go out into the desert. What? Oh, yeah, that was <gasps> awesome. Oh, my Lord, I love that RV trip. Uh, I really want to do it again. We will. Winter break? Not winter break, but oh. summer. So um, we only have one minute left, so if there's anything that you guys have just got burning on your mind, I know... Your minds are always racing. You're always learning new things. And um, 
Go ahead. Why did you guys? Why did you and mom decide to um break um have, get a divorce? Um, I think mom just kind of felt like uh, we had weren't just enjoying ourselves anymore, and I had to agree with her that we were just sort of staying married because we were married, not because we necessarily had the same feelings about each other. And I think we had sort of taken each other for granted. And we still love each other and care about and I still love your mom and care about her, but I really, um, we just didn't take care of each other and our emotions for each other. Okay. Um, go ahead, Emily. Um, um, I don't mind the divorce anymore because I think positive mm -hmm. and I think, well, we got a humongous new house. That's true. Material things do come along with divorces. And we got a What do you think, Elizabeth? Brand new, brand new. Go ahead, Emma. And we get houses. Two, we get Christmas at two houses, uh -huh. and we get holidays at two houses. Yay. What do you think, Liz? And uh, cheese. Really? And cheese? I love cheese. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, that's that's just great, Emily. I well, know. I'm sad that we're not together for the two of you, that's for sure, because I think that I didn't like when parents got divorced, and I was hoping that wouldn't happen. What's about you? What do you think about it? It's good, except for just like a week ago, we were crying and we were laughing about it. Uh, yeah. I still like cheese. Yeah, I think <laughs> I miss I miss waking you guys up every day. That's the biggest thing. Cheese. Well, will you stop talking about cheese? Thanks a lot for those cheese comments, Emily. Yeah. And uh, totally. I want to thank you both for coming today. I really enjoyed this, and it was amazing how quickly forty minutes could go by, huh? Yeah. Ooh, can we get donuts? And we can stop by and get the pumpkins to paint them blue, first class, and get you a donut. Yay. Can I have a donut, too? Well, you already had your donut. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Yeah, it is. I uh, have mine. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. I love you guys a lot, and thanks a lot for coming. I love you, too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. I love you. Wait, what? <laughs>